So we're here in London at the Gemini PDA headquarters. And uh, who are you? I, I'm uh, Davide Guidi. I'm a CTO of Planet Computers. Uh, welcome, Nicolas, to our uh, Planet Computers Labs. So what date are we today? I uh, think it's uh, 15, right? 15 of March. 2018. So, 2018. And... Uh, how is it going with the mass production and the shipping and everything? It's going, it's going very well. Uh, we have been extremely busy in the past uh, uh, few weeks, especially. Uh, we got the first, um, the first batch production out, so the first thousand units, and we and we managed to ship um, one thousand already. Almost yes, almost a thousand out. And, and how many more backers are left? Uh, we have a total of 4,200 uh, plus units, so uh, we still have a Whoa. long way to go, but luckily uh, Chinese New Year is now over, so uh, we will be able to ship and uh, to manufacture and to ship the devices very much, much quickly. Quickly, right? Yes. So um, 1,000, that's awesome. So that means, I, I was checking your Twitter just before, actually it's exploding with users and they're doing all kinds of stuff and like um, right here, this is one of your posters. It shows the the heat map of where the customers are. There's a lot of lot of guys, a lot of guys and girls Japan. over here in Japan, in Europe, in Western US. Correct. Australia. Yeah, yeah, a few, a few. Yes. Um, it's it's really a device that was uh, missed really for a very long time, and uh, we find that a lot of people from all over the world really are uh, interested in this device. What are they doing right now? Because they got it for a few weeks. Some of them. They, they got them just now, they're getting them. So they, they're running Android, like that's your default thing, right? You have the Android? Yes, uh, yes. so here we have several um, examples. Some of them are final uh, production run, some of them are prototypes, and they run different operating systems here. So this is the this is the fourth one that is shipped to the backers for the moment, which contains only Android. And uh, we, are, we provided uh, alternative firmware and uh, a flash tool for the backer who wanted to uh, create a dual boot device. So all these are running Linux, all kinds of different Linux over here. Yes. So this is Android and... Correct. This is, this is Android. All the others are dual boot versions and uh, they have been contributed by uh, mainly by um, open source communities and it was an effort led by Nikita uh, Ukrenkov, our uh, Russian hackers. Who's this guy? Who He's, a, he's actually a Russian student who um, got in touch with us and asked him to help. And uh, we started working together. Um, he has some very specific um, deep knowledge about um, Linux. And he helped us very much um, having some having different kind of flavors. Nice. We had internally a Debian version prepared, but actually, uh, as you can see here. So what do we, we have, have here? What do you have? So uh, this is Debian. Debian right here. Uh, this is Debian, uh, correct. This is, yeah, this is Debian right. running um, LXQT. Uh, nice. I think it's called um, UI. Yeah. This is uh, Ubuntu. Uh, this is the Ubuntu, Ubuntu? version. Um, what kind of Ubuntu 17 is here? 17.10. 17.10, that's kind of like the latest. It's one of the latest, yes. And, uh, and it's running the GNOME shell. Um, at the moment, so this is kind you have of a mouse uh, on this one. Yes, uh, this is connected to our, uh, to our USB C mouse, so you can go and click and uh, interact with the machine. Yeah, I'm just gonna click in uh, that corner there. All right, so you got Debian, Ubuntu. This is Sailfish. Sailfish. Jola. Uh, correct. And is it smooth? <clears throat> it's uh, it's actually quite smooth. Uh, it's a quite um, it's very interesting because it's one you, you know we didn't uh, we didn't spend too much time on it, but it's actually it's a, already a very good porting. So um, hardware is uh, the GPU acceleration. We have uh, we have pretty much most of the drivers working, including 4G connection and telephony support. You have 4G. <coughs> you have the mobile working. The GPU accelerated. On, yes, GPU acceleration, uh, 4G audio, video. Uh, telephony support, so we can we can place calls from Sailfish on this device, and of course it's kind of early days, so 
uh, we are going to work more on that and provide uh, even better support. But it's already, uh, it's already very, very good. Can very, you type something cool? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, this is a Linux machine, so you can type things like top to check, uh, you know, your processes and stuff. Uh, yeah. Is this kind of like mind-blowingly awesome, or what? What? What's going on? Because this, I don't see this very often. Um, just, just one more. There's one more. You. Uh, yes. Right here. This is this is really experimental. So this is an operating system called uh, Post Market OS. And the only reason we have it is because, um, well, first because we can, and secondly because uh, it's uh, you know people who own a Nokia N900 like like myself in the past will be very um, nostalgic nostalgic to see this this uh, this desktop um, nice. uh, image because that was the uh, the main one for all the Memo, Migo, and and, and so on uh, operating system. It's an experimental version, but it's uh, you know it's, it it already works and it's it's quite interesting. It shows you the potential of this device. So right and now the we just have five different Linuxes. Okay, the main Android. You have these over there, but potentially, what's happening right now? Are the source code is everything outside? Uh, yes. So basically, you know, since the beginning, our idea was to. So so this device comes from actually a need. We, we really needed something like this, a device, uh, you know, a kind of hacker dreams, kind of little device you can bring with you, which enhances your, um, uh, your, your possibility of doing things, right? And this device is, um, is really interesting because we have not used to have anything like this anymore. It's, uh, it's tasing, it fits in your pocket, that's the main thing. It's a device with a keyboard that fits in your pocket. And since the beginning we wanted a really um, flexible machine. So we wanted to create something open, and for this reason, we uh, we already um, announced that we are gonna open source two key parts um, of the of the product. One is the uh, kernel, and the second part is the bootloader. And uh, we are gonna do this in the in the next few uh, in the next few days or weeks. And, uh, and the reason is we want to allow people that are not happy with Android or, or with the Linux version we provide to actually port pretty much whatever they want to this device. So if you have uh, the kernel, if you have the bootloader, you can pretty much do whatever you want with the device. You can run Chromium OS, maybe. You could run uh, AOSP Android and tweak it whatever way you want. You know, the most important thing is you're free. You're free to choose what you want. And you are free if you have the knowledge, if you have the will, you are free to port anything. To Mandriva, Linux. Yes, why not? And uh, um, all these different flavors of uh, Xubuntu, Lubuntu, and uh, let's say the, the smaller, the smaller kind of OS is maybe uh, there's some some uh, uh, like some smaller variants of maybe what's it called the uh, 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 Red Hat. They have this open source. OS is too and stuff. I mean, the, everything here is open source, right? Uh, the, yes, the other, the other very yes. Apart from Android, the, the other one are all is all Linux, so all, all open source, correct? And um, how is it so smooth when you when you are in here? Um, how can it be using? Is it using the the binaries that are accelerating the GPU and yeah. everything? So technically, the situation is is the following. So there is um, there is one library in particular called LibHybris, uh, which has been developed, and um, it's a quite an amazing library because it allows uh, Linux to reuse some functionality which are designed for Android. Basically, that means that. Um, when Linux, you know, when Linux boot, when the operating system is up and running, there is a Linux container which initializes uh, some small Android bits, and in particular um, the GPU acceleration, um, the 4G connection, and so on, and basically exports this functionality down to Linux. So an operating system like uh, Yola, like Selfish, can actually have um, uh, GPU acceleration, so have very, very um, fluid animations, and it's very responsive uh, because of this. And hopefully this this trick, so it's not it's not running on the Android kernel. It's not, uh, uh, there's not something, I thought it was something like that, but it's the Linux kernel that has all the Android yes. binaries in some kind of layer. Yeah, that's correct, because uh, Android kernel in reality is a Linux kernel, 
with some Android um, extra bits. And, what, uh, and, and basically what this uh, library does is exposing the Android parts for Linux. So there is no Android running here, it's just Linux. Uh, there are just some uh, drivers which are initialized in a kind of Android container and then um, provided to, uh, to Linux. So right now I pushed your off button and if I just uh, boot it up again, What's going to happen? It's just yes, Android. It's a, it's a dual boot, so basically the, the way we design it is um, if you boot up the unit normally, it will boot up in Android. Mr. But if you press so this is the what's button... Happening now? Yeah, this is what's happening now. So I just rebooted the unit and this should boot up in Android now. But if I boot and at the same time I keep press this button, uh, it will actually boot into, in this case, Sailfish. You have a really cool boot up animation. Thank you. <laughs> All right, the planets are on the planet. Yeah, so you can see Planet and then uh, powered by Android, so as you would expect, Android will now boot. Here it is. With the longest battery life in London? I mean, I'm joking, but very long battery, right? 4250, 4, or is it? You see, this is, again, it's a device that has to be uh, useful. And if the device stops working half a day through, then what do you do with it? Nothing. So we wanted a device that, um, you know, it's, it's portable, it's small, it's light, but also that you can rely on. And we are quite happy at the end, we, we managed to get a 4,200 milliampere hour battery. And um, we think it's good enough for, for most of, most it's of the cases. the biggest cases. in the market, or one you of know, them. In, in the shows, we keep it running like eight to seven to eight hours uh, continuously with the screen continuously on and attached to an HDMI, uh, or better, USB-C to HDMI adapter, and it runs for seven, eight hours. And is this the, the latest one, this one, or is this one of the earlier prototypes? Uh, let me check. Oh, this, uh, one? this is possibly, no, this is not the latest. The latest, the latest right? doesn't have any sticker on it, so let me just find it, possibly it's this one. Yeah. Uh, so this is the one they're getting, yes. the backers right so now? So you can see it's the latest version, so you can see um, it's, it's, it's uh, basically the way has been designed. Nice. Uh, so and when uh, you have it closed, it can still run different things. And yes. So uh, if look, you have. Uh, so you can see. First of all, it has two USB C, one per side. So one here else does this. in one and the other side. Uh, there is an extra button here, which is a kind of smart button, and so it's, it's not used on off. It's no, it's not on off. It's used in different way. Um, when the machine runs Android, uh, if you just press it, it will invoke the uh, Android Assistant, so you can dictate some commands. Uh, but you can use it when you are receiving a call. You can use it to actually uh, take the call, or nice. if you if you keep it pressed to um, to reject the call. On the other side, uh, we have the uh, jack mini jack for the headphones and another USB-C port. Nice two USB-C. I see a little light in the in the USB. Is it? Uh... There's some, there's some, uh, the, maybe the display is running is Ubuntu, this one, right? Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, so all this power oh, management, yes, this just, yeah. all this power management stuff is going to be eventually optimized because uh, once you make it open, uh, what would you like the community to do to optimize the Linux here? What can they do? Because right now this trick is only for the Sailfish, the Android speed up. Or is it available for the other Linuxes yet? You see, we are, we are still working on it very, uh, very much. So um, we managed to, to do already some of the work. What really needs is a bit of love for, you know, polishing some rough edges, basically. Uh, but we, in, in the latest days, we managed to get um, accelerated GPU, uh, also on Debian and Ubuntu. We still miss a few drivers, um, like for example the USB-C to HDMI, uh, but we hope to have them like very very quickly. Is there, uh, it would be nice if you could do the the HDMI with a secondary display. I yes. mean, what, what I even think the dream would be to have Android as a default on this display and then have one of the other Linuxes on the other one. But that's a lot to ask, right? You know, it's. Um, there are so many things. It's a device that it's um, it's very important to different people in different ways, and uh, it's very difficult to do everything. But we need to start somewhere, and I think we we now have a kind of product, a version one, 
which is already very, very interesting. And uh, from our side, we're just happy that the device can be tailored to different needs. And, uh, and hopefully very soon we will see more and more operating systems running on it and, uh, and, and improved software. So this is your cable right here? Yes, we have uh, a few accessories. Um, so this is the USB-C to HDMI cable, which allows you to connect to a big monitor and um, it allows you to output full HD. Nice. Uh, this is a USB-C hub. And this is quite an interesting uh, thing for us because- Can we see it? Yes, we can open see it. Um, I can just open it for you. Yeah. Let me see if there is a really open box or- uh, Is there like an open hub? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we don't wanna it's mess okay. around with the ones you're gonna ship. <laughs> no, no. Okay. So, uh, to us, it's very interesting because okay, it has normal USB C, uh, sorry, USB A connectors, but it also has an Ethernet port. Nice. Is it a gigabit? Um, nah, good question. Yeah, poss possibly. So there probably is gigabit LT uh, Ethernet support, it's I guess, on the SOC. But th th these are blue, so they're USB three. Uh, correct. That's cool. Yes. And with another here, you can use for charging the power delivery. Um, there is a charging port, it's not yet enabled, so you cannot use it for charging and uh, um, connecting at the moment. Can you charge on, on both uh, Type C's? Uh, no, the ports are slightly different, I'll explain. Um, on the, on the left-hand side port, uh, this one can be used for connecting to a PC, it can be used to charge the unit, and it can be used to connect to a USB hub. And okay. the right hand side can be used to connect to a single USB peripherals like a, a, a mouse or a keyboard and can be used to connect the USB-C to HDMI cable. Nice. So it's not for hub here, only there. This one is not for the hub, correct. But one, one unit? But one unit. Or the HDMI. Correct. Which is awesome, which is great. <laughs> And you have a, a, a very cool HDMI cable that doesn't have a converter and everything, so so you're not doing a display port or something like that. It's like proper it's a, HDMI it's a, out. It's a passive. Um, it's a passive cable, so there are no components inside, <clears throat> and it's just um, routing basically the signal through. Uh, it's HDMI. just getting the the Type C out for an HDMI. It's totally awesome. This is the gold. Is it real gold? Yes, this uh, yes, this is actually real gold. Um, this is golden, so this is just golden color, and you can see the difference. Uh, this is yeah. this is not gold. This is, is actually real gold. And and so, and uh, you have backers who ordered the real gold. Uh, yes, we decided to uh, create only a very very limited number, like thirty, and we sold um, sold out, no? Almost all of them, yes. Wow. And this was one thousand dollar, or how much for the gold one? Uh, yes, I believe a thousand dollars. Yes, nice. correct. So they'll be very happy to have some gold in their pocket. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be cool. Is yours gold? No, no. You're not a gold. No, no, no. Just using you're using all these. You're you you are doing all the. What is it that you do? What do you do? Uh, well, um, you, you know the everything? team is quite small, so we do a bit of everything, and um, well, we just uh, personally, I'm just on a technical side, so anything related to. Uh, you know, software um, and, and and many other things. We are just a small team, so we have to cover several roles, actually. And the bootloader definitely unlocked. Uh, yes, I mean, we it's more than that. We will provide the source code. So the, the unit is uh, unlocked in the sense that you can actually, um, you can reflash it, the different firmware, but we will provide the source code. So source code for the bootloader means that um, it will enable people to do things which are, which we are not currently allowed. For example, I don't know, booting the unit on um, booting Linux on an external SD card or even from a portable USB-C stick. So they are all like edge cases. And if you have the bootloader, you can really decide what to do. And you can do more than dual boot. You could do triple, oh, technically, quadruple boot, whatever. Absolutely. Technically, you can do pretty much what, what you want. And I hope somebody figures out how to do an Android here, the latest, best, the Android. I think they're number P right now. They're getting yeah, to P. So, yeah. But whenever the software, or 8 would be cool. So have Android right here, and then on the external display, another, both at the same time somehow. Maybe, somehow, it will work. So hopefully... Um, um, the guys at the MediaTek, they're supporting you, hopefully, right? 
and it's not just uh, the open source or the open source community and uh, and you're a Russian hacker and and you are a hacker yourself, right? Uh, well, we, we, we yes, whatever, yeah. whatever hacker means, but yes, yeah. we work with technologies. Um, yes, it's you know it's always a trade-off. It's very difficult to say. To, to, to put a stop, you know, in, we, we have a lot of ideas, we receive a lot of suggestions for the backers, and um, a lot of suggestions make sense. It's just always a trade-off to decide when to stop and to actually release a version, rather than wait and, and make, improve the, the product even more. You have only 24 hours in a day, right? How many Correct. emails are you getting right now? Uh, well, comments and everything? <clears throat> a lot, a lot, yes. Well, hopefully this, uh, people are not worried about the shipping or anything because they can see that lots of people are getting it, right? So, uh, yes, 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 we, we, we ship already a lot of units and uh, we started receiving a few uh, few comments, a few reviews on the net. Uh, some it's good quite, reviews? It's quite, yes, some good reviews, yes, it's quite encouraging. Most, um, mostly good, right? Um, yes, I would say mostly good, yes. Yeah. The only ones that are negative are the people that don't even have one, they haven't tried it and they're like, they just don't understand why you would release a PDA in 2018. But it's, I think PDA is the future. It's you, not the you past. You see, it's, uh, I don't think it's a product for everybody. And I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a product for people that needs this kind of devices. And, um, you know, there is a philosophy behind it. And it's, uh, and it's that there are devices for media consumption and there are devices for actually creating something. And uh, we believe that, um, you want me to? Yeah, sorry, yeah. Sorry. We, you believe that's what? Sorry. And uh, we believe that uh, there are some kind of devices which are here to say, like tablets, which are perfectly, um, it's, it, they're very well designed for consuming media, like watching a movie or so. But this kind of device is designed to be creative and to be, um, yes, and to be productive on the move. And you cannot do that with a tablet or with a phone. You really need a device with a keyboard, a device that is designed for actually allowing you to, to do stuff. And it's actually type. really great to type just with your thumbs on it, right? It's like a much it better is. than a Blackberry. Uh, this is the proper size keyboard, like to do some thumb typing. Yes, it is. Uh, it can be used for thumb typing, so if you can use it, uh, you know, if you're standing up, uh, and it works very well when you put it down because you need a very, very small space. Uh, you see this is a very small mouse. Bluetooth and mouse is no problem too, right? Yeah. yeah. And if you have a small, if you have some space, you can put it down and you can actually type. Possibly with all the fingers, if you can do that. Was this it's the latest? Uh, which one was the latest? Sorry, this one? Uh, I believe yeah. so, yes. Yeah. yes. So let's go and... Uh, I'm going to go in here. I don't know, this, uh, that's not, this is a special office app, but, um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see um, if it can be fully smooth, fully hardware accelerated. This is running on the X27, which is, um, as far as I remember, is a, um, it's not the DECA core, right? It's a it is a DECA core, yes. DECA core. It is a DECA core device, yes. So it has two... <coughs> it has 10 cores, it has three... Uh, clusters of, of, of uh, processors, uh, of course, and um, and basically they're used. You know, it, it uses one processor or more based on the load. So in the worst case, if a lot of uh, if if you're doing something very CPU intensive, ten cores would be used at the same time. So is it two seventy two and eight fifty three? As far as I remember, the 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 ARM Cortex and all that that stuff. Actually, it's yeah, it's on this one, right? The technical specification here. Yeah. Yes, it's a two A seventy two, four Cortex A fifty three, and another four A fifty three at a different. Uh, and you have a T eight eighty, which is a pretty awesome GPU. Uh, but even though it, the GPU is not open source yet, still, hopefully all these binaries and that trick. What do you call it already? The the, the driver. So the, so the library is called LibHybris. LibHybris. Who did that? Is it a uh, new thing? It's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of the, of the guy, but it's actually, yes, one guy, which, if, I, if I'm not wrong, has been then hired by um, either Ubuntu or Yola to oh. develop, uh, because it's basically the library which is at the basis of, um, of the Yola Sailfish and nice. of what was Ubuntu Touch. Nice. So uh, the library is open source, and, um, and, and, and that's what we are using. Is it a big thing? That uh, that library, 
Is it a big install or a little? It's, it's a clever thing, the library. Does it have to be big. adjusted and adapted for each different Linux distribution, optimized for each one? One thing you have to do is you have to optimize all the short keyboard shortcuts, right? Uh, hopefully, there will be ways to get all these to work. Yes, it's, uh, yes, yes, exactly. So that's one of the things. And you know, on the Linux side, things are slightly more complicated because, for example, when you, have, uh, when you get all the key mapping right, then um, you have to be careful what window manager you're using because some like high, uh, like for example GNOME shell uh, can recognize uh, correctly all the shortcuts but other window manager uh, they might not have the same kind of power so they don't have the same kind of um, functionality and some uh, for example brightness up or down or volume up or down shortcuts uh, might not work so we are still in that process of um, Connecting all these little bits together to make to make uh, to make the, the the unit perfectly user friendly. And on your website, there's a flashing tool that's required, right? Which is uh, right now runs on Windows, but can it run on something else, maybe? Or uh, yes. So the tool it's it's called SP Flash Tool, and um, yes, it runs at the moment only on Windows. Um, it's uh, it can be compiled for Linux, so we are planning to uh, to provide very soon a Linux version. Um, this goes along the side, again, um, this kind of idea of having a, um, a device that can be tailored to your needs. So we decided to, uh, instead of forcing the user to have a dual boot device and to have one flavor of Linux, which was our initial idea, since we discovered we can run more than one flavor, we decided to, uh, to give away a tool and, and some instructions. So a user that wants to... Um, install a second operating system can do it and uh, so in on, on our website at the moment we have um, we have the drivers we have the flash tool uh, software and we have at the moment two kind of firmware one is the android original and the second one is the um, is a dual boot linux debian and android uh, technology preview uh, we will um, we will have more firmware coming very soon Nice. So that's uh, it's kind of like mind blowing. You're doing all these things, and you are just like a, an Indiegogo project. It's kind of awesome, right? Yeah. I mean, we. It's true that the keyboard perceived. is stable. The keyboard, the keyboard is the keyboard is important for us. So uh, we try to have like a, like a very good keyboard. If the keyboard is not good. It's actually the whole device is completely useless. So the keyboard is actually the most important uh, things. It's uh, it's easy to type. It's so uh, can you type? Um, it's easy to type. Let's you you write that. Uh, so which which OS is this one? I, I don't know. I think we are inside um, the LibreOffice math to create. This formats. is a, the Debian, so right? It's Debian, yeah. Let me just go to a uh, text application. I don't know what we're doing there. And I think I managed to restart the machine. Oh, okay. It's fine. So yeah, so uh, the the Linux stuff is uh, oops, it's a work in progress. And this is this also the latest uh, keyboard, right? This one. Uh, I can. Yeah. I can have a look. I can type happily. Let's see if there's any kind of like text editor or something. Yep. There was no spelling mistakes at all. <laughs> Perfect. You used to it, right? You you the you may be the guy in the world that's been using it the most. Uh, the keyboard. Post. I, I'm not sure actually. Uh, it is true that since um, probably a month, I'm using it as a, my my main device. Uh, but I had a previous generation of keyboard, which is not as good as the one that the backers had. And um, you know, the one that we released to the backers is actually very very good. We are very happy with it. Cool. Um, mm. So, can just tell one or two stories about what we're seeing on Twitter happening right now, like in Japan and stuff. What's happening? What are people uh, doing? You know, it seemed very we happy. have been, 
uh, we have been um, it, it's quite interesting because there were people really missing this format so there were people used to have um, devices like the Palm, like uh, the Scion or the Nokia communicator and we you know we received email very uh, very interesting emails of people telling us I don't know one guy was telling us oh well guys every couple of years I'm using Google to search for uh, Nokia communicators uh, like devices and every two years I'm disappointed this time I found you oh how amazing I'm going to back your project immediately right and th these are kind of um, you know it's, it's very interesting is is a device that fits a need and there, were, there are lots of people that need a device where they can type and they can uh, be productive wherever they wherever they go and why are they so happy with it in Japan uh, that's a very good question. I They're think the number one market. Right? You know, you, you know, it's it's a country where they 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 are really uh, they are really into gadgets and they are really into this kind of devices, especially typing devices. Maybe for Japanese language, <coughs> a touchscreen is is it, it's much more important for them to have a proper keyboard. Maybe I don't know how it works. Their or language. probably or probably just they see you know they understand the fact that. You know, with, with a device like this, you can actually be productive on the go. You know, you can do things like, you know, you could do everything on a mobile phone if you want to, but you can't really do easily, I don't know, things like doing a spreadsheet, because it's just a touch screen, it's very complicated, but with a, with a keyboard, it becomes actually a very, very different uh, proposition. And it totally works on the Japanese CDMA and on the American CDMA and on the GSM networks is one device for the world whole yeah, world yes i mean we we support a number of uh, we support both CDMA and LTE and we try to support as many uh, bands as possible uh, the bands are actually uh, here these are the LTE bands that we support it's a device that can be used worldwide. Uh, we don't support all the bands available in the world. Um, I don't know if there is a phone that supports everything in a single version, but we try to do our best and uh, definitely can be used pretty much everywhere. Dual SIM, hardware dual SIM, right? Um, so uh, we have one SIM, which is a normal uh, SIM slot, so you can put a micro SD. We have support for uh, something called an eSIM, which is an embedded SIM. And that is a kind of chip, and it will be used in the future to do uh, like very interesting things like downloading a mobile phone number uh, directly into the chip. So nice. uh, basically um, removing the need of a SIM, the plastic actually SIM. Maybe you get into a new country and boom, you can choose your carrier. It just loads it in, maybe. Yeah. Oh yes, I mean it will open up a lot of possibilities. So you can imagine, uh, you know, downloading, you know, going to another country and just downloading a phone number, so you don't have to go to a shop, and uh, you could do everything uh, literally online. And I imagine there's uh, multiple hundred megabit per second LTE already, right? Is uh, uh, so maybe you can get the fastest LTE in any country you get to, you want. If the band is supported, yes, yes. Cool. If, if so that's that's cool, and this is just uh, March fifteenth. And what's next? What's gonna happen next week? What's happening the week after? What, what's happening right now? Uh, course, right now we are backers. well. Right now we are. You know, the hardware is done. So right now we are trying to improve um, to improve the software. So I can tell you that we had some applications that we um, that we already provided in device, and uh, for example the. Uh, you know the sort of application bar so when you press the uh, the planet button there is this application bar that pops up and is customizable so you can put Transparent. your own uh, yes yes and you can put your own applications there so you can access them uh, in a what very, very easy on way on planet you have things like uh, the planet support so you go immediately to our website in planet store you just click you can buy 10 more devices what do you do in planet store uh, we will be able to yes yeah very soon and uh, so it's basically this. This is just you know just to keep in touch with us, and the plant support uh, redirects you immediately to the support website. You get the latest news. You can check. You have a travel shooting. Uh, if you have some issues, you can you can get information about the. Device. Is there a forum? Uh, yes, we do have a forum um, for uh, developers mainly. It's uh, developer uh, dot planet com. 
www.code.uk. Uh, this is the forum. Nice. And There's also an XDA forum, XDA developers. They have a category for you. Yes, apparently yes. It's been announced very, uh, I think, yesterday. Hopefully some of these awesome hackers like get interested and start doing crazy stuff. They, yes, they yes. Welcome I mean, to do, right? This is, you know, it's, it's a device designed for this. So hopefully, yes. Hopefully you've made it so there's no way it's going to break, right? Uh, no matter what people do. Uh, it's, it's quite difficult because of the way the MediaTek chipset is designed. Uh, even if the operating system <coughs> doesn't boot, um, just by connecting the device uh, to a PC, uh, the device will enter in a kind of um, so-called fast yeah. boot mode. And that means that it can, uh, you know, a new firmware can be flushed straight away. So there's not too, too much, hopefully, of a risk in, in that direction. And uh, um, uh, what's called uh, the, the it, 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 I mean, with the use that you've done over the past, the re recent past, it's like it's very stable, it doesn't get too hot. It's like, uh, yeah, it's correct. It I doesn't mean, disconnect. Like, that. You, you, you must have some bugs, no? What, what bugs? Um, you know, for us, the most important thing is that it's a, it's a very stable uh, device. Um, we, we usually, on Android at least, we never experience a crash, let's say. Um, we, have, we still have to provide more uh, support for some applications. So, as I was saying, we started with the app bar, but we have other applications uh, which we are working on, like the calendar, um, some they are they are like a subset of very important application, which we are optimizing for this uh, for this format. How does and the multi window is, work? Uh, the multi window work. You just uh, press this button. Okay, we got an app which doesn't support that. Uh, let me try this. Okay, and you can just uh, so that's use can you two things that at the or same time. That's already the best multi window system. This is just provided by Android, and yeah, uh, yeah it, it's. Uh, it's pretty much. Uh, it's Which pretty is much awesome this. to have this on the on the on the horizontal display. It's uh, yeah, it's 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 very good because uh, the display is actually uh, a eighteen by nine, so a two point two per one. So it's actually two time, um, you know, x and one y. So you can easily have two application. Nice. One plus the other. Nice, cool. So all these uh, users, hopefully. They can send you a summary because you're very busy, but it would be great if you the, um, somehow they should uh, put all their feature requests, suggestions, and just put them in all the... Absolutely. They can blog we, it, tweet it, uh, put a new forum, send you emails. Yes, um, we are mm, very happy to receive comments and uh, suggestions. Uh, as our team is not that big, we cannot follow everything, but we definitely... Um, read all the comments, all the suggestions that, uh, that they are sent to us and, uh, and hopefully with the right time we will, uh, uh, we will act on that, yes. And maybe, uh, maybe you are successful, I hope that you can hire, right? You are... Yes, we are actually in the process of hiring a few, uh, a few people uh, because of the... Yes, because it's, it's going very well and uh, uh, we are now on the point in which we have a lot of work for so, ourselves so and could, we need to we need to have more people maybe developers that's... right maybe uh, some yes, other uh, people definitely uh, customer support uh, so support and uh, definitely developers as well at least one or two so if you have any interest please get in touch with us and uh, let us know so you can look at the camera you can say if you love linux if you know how to make the best linux on arm absolutely linux let's work on together arm. Uh, Linux systems, Android, if you like technology, if you like to work in a company who does things a bit differently. In London? In London. Or oh, it doesn't have to be in London, right? But you have a space, maybe, we, in we, the office? Yes, we will have some space in the office. We need to, we need to work closely now. Cool. Get, get uh, super smooth, super stable. And Indiegogo, of course, is awesome. But hopefully the next level is like, uh, I don't know, uh, huge, something huge. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Cool.